Hey, I'm Crystal Beasley. Too many current games use our hands as hands. They're missing out on all the fun. I don't want a hand at all. I want a set of razor sharp clippers. I don't want two arms. I want three. I don't want to be a human at all. I want to be a dinosaur stomping around. This is Embodied Reality, the show that looks at neuroscience and cognitive psychology for clues on how to build great VR experiences. Find out how to do this and more after the jump. <laughs> Turns out we can figure out how to control three arms in only a few minutes of training. Researchers at the Stanford Virtual Human Interaction Lab put players in a body with an arm protruding out of the center of their chest. They controlled that third arm with a small flick of their wrist. In only two and a half minutes of play, they could grab boxes faster than doing the task with two arms. What? We spent our whole lives with two arms? In two and a half minutes, you're telling me we can control three arms better? That's just wild. In VR, we can give players a virtual body that they can quickly figure out how to control. Throw the term homuncular flexibility into Google Scholar and you'll find out more than you ever wanted to know. I read the dry academic papers so you don't have to. There are links in the show notes to some of my favorite studies. The idea of driving a novel body is already getting integrated into VR content. Life of Us takes you along an epic evolutionary timescale from the era of single-celled organisms to dinosaurs to a human body and even a future of robo-bodies. Fembots have feelings too. You inhabit the body of a bird and flap your wings to soar along. As an ape, you wander around with your ape friend and throw the ape babies around. As a tadpole, you blow bubbles by singing into the mic. They modulate your voice to make it sound like you're underwater. Nice touch, y'all. High five. As a pterodactyl, you can yell the fire. I really love that they mapped audio input to be a controller. It's so smart. So my advice to you to that is to think about all the potential inputs you have at your disposal and brainstorm which of those you might map to controlling the virtual bodies in your experience. I'm hoping Life of Us adds more interactivity with these animal bodies before it releases later this year. The key to making these shenanigans of driving a non-human body possible is high fidelity motion tracking. Our current hand controllers can map motions of the wrist. As hardware develops to capture more and more of the body's motion, we'll have that many more tools in our toolbox. Let's think forward a tiny, tiny little bit into the future to a world where we have full body motion capture available on mainstream hardware. Imagine your player begins on level one with a body plan similar to ours. Two arms, two legs, and one head. Say, a kitty. Kitty! It's different, but not too different. Kitties have two arms and legs. They also have a tail. A tail? I always wanted a tail. He doesn't know whose tail it is. As researchers from University College London demonstrated, players can learn how to control the tail with slight swathes of the hips. These motions are quite natural and don't require very much training. To speed that learning process along, you can have a friend in the same body model the motion. Give your player who's newly inhabiting a kitty body an NPC kitty friend to show her the ropes. If your player sees her kitty friend slap things with her tail and win points, that will trigger her to think, oh, right, I have a tail, and immediately start figuring out how to move that tail. Another technique to speed along training is to use a virtual mirror to show them how the motions of their real body translate to their new virtual body. It can be a challenge to realize you're in a new body if you can't actually see yourself. The third trick I'll talk about today is to make a duplicate avatar so that they're looking at themselves from a third person perspective. The cow you look over at standing in the field is actually you. When you pick up your hand, she picks up her hoof. When the player can see their virtual body, they figure out how to control it really quickly. A lot of that process happens automatically. Yep, it really is that simple. It's very simple, even for you. Participants in the study with the third arm often figure it out without any instruction whatsoever. What's weirder, they say things like, I have no idea what I did to move it, I just did. 
Y'all brains are so cool. The thoughts and shivers down my spine. We're just wired to figure this stuff out. As your player becomes more and more comfortable learning to drive a novel body, you can increase the difficulty by making a body a little bit less like the human one. Players can progress from a kitty with four legs to an ant with six to a lobster with eight plus two pinchers you have to use to figure out how to snip the little sprigs of parsley off the stems. What? You never fantasized about being a lobster chef? Cooking up a nice vegetarian mood? <laughs> <laughs> you can keep the sense of play from novel sensations going by deviating further and further from human. How cool would it be to drive a body of a millipede with all their tiny little legs? Or a snake wiggling across the stand dune? Will somebody please go build this so I can play it? Today, we talked about getting creative with mapping inputs to control brand new appendages like tails and third arms. Also, to make sure players can see their actions so they can quickly learn new gestures and actions. And lastly, to give players NPC friends who model the actions so they can mimic them. I want to try out as many of these VR experiences as I can get my hands on. If you know of more that already make use of this technique, please send them my way, either in the comments below or on Twitter at Crystal D. Beasley. Can't wait to hear from y'all. Check out the show notes for links to all the research mentioned in this video and to related episodes. Till next time, I'm Crystal Beasley. You're an insane power man. And this is Embodied Reality. Everything's okay.